Hello. This is Lesson 10, Pornography and Obscenity, and we will be uh, showing this PowerPoint slide, so hopefully uh, we'll be able to get this thing rolling. So, second slide here is your objectives, and I want you to be able to recognize the five fi financial keystones for vice, define pornography, define obscenity, compare and contrast soft versus hard porn, Recognize the three-pronged test for pornography. Identify six elements of obesity, um, I'm sorry, obscenity. Recognize landmark cases in Roth versus the United States. And recognize Miller versus California. Now we've talked about the financial keystones of organized crime. And we ref commonly refer to them as vice vice crimes and they consist of gambling prostitution drug trafficking obscenity and pornography as well as loan sharking we've covered gambling we'll uh, be covering prostitution and drug trafficking next uh, professor diaz had talked about loan sharking so uh, we're going to complete this lesson on obscenity and pornography we have to go back to our uh, early colonial periods and also look at Webster's Dictionary on the definition of vice. And vice is basically defined as a moral failing, an evil, wicked conduct, corruption, depravity. And from a societal standpoint, uh, we look at vice crimes and those people that are engaged in them uh, as an act of moral weakness comes down to what we discussed in chapter two as far as the rational choice theory and in that it's a, def a decision that an individual who's engaged or involved in this type of activity uh, makes so they make that conscious decision to engage in this type of activity by their very nature vice crimes are a catalyst for criminal activity meaning it's a word that we use it's called synergism it's a it's, it's a uh, a concept of compounding uh, something. Uh, take prostitution, for example. Uh, it's a synergistic crime in that there's other crimes that usually are associated with it. Uh, you have uh, prostitution itself, but a vast uh, majority of the prostitutes are addicted to drugs, so you have drug misuse and abuse. Uh, you have uh, sexual violence, physical violence, you have theft, you have robbery. So these are all crimes that are associated with that one crime. Take gambling, uh, pretty much the same thing. Uh, theft related, drug usage, trafficking, sales go hand in hand with gambling, uh, as well as, as we know, as physical violence. Unfortunately, there's usually a double standard that exists when we're dealing with uh, these crimes from a social and legal sets, uh, standpoint, socially prostitution obviously you've got health related um, uh, problems uh, STD transfer etc uh, legally there's a double standard in the fact that there's not enough resources to effectively combat a lot of vice related crime particularly with the advent of the computer and globalization of uh, the internet uh, it makes it extremely hard and difficult to conduct investigations without violation of personal privacy and constitutional issues. Uh, we don't have enough manpower or resources to really effectively combat these types of crimes. In this slide here, we have soft porn versus hard porn. And there's a link up here at the top left-hand corner. If you click on this link, it will connect you to what I considered a uh, pretty good description of what soft porn is. Uh, it is a professional music video by, um, I don't know, it's either a French, French-Canadian group or pop group, but the uh, storyline is very suggestive. There is some partial nudity by uh, one of the female actors, but there's also depictions and insinuations of different sex acts uh, without really doing the act itself. So foreign objects are used uh, to sim s simulate uh, uh, different part, body parts and uh, sexual acts. Uh, you don't have to view it if you find uh, this 
to be unappealing to you. Um, I just want you to look at it from an academic standpoint. Also, some of the acts depicted are those of uh, S&M or sadomasochism. So this whole video contains a lot of the uh, topical area that we're talking about, but it's very characteristic of a soft porn. When we talk about soft and hard porn, it basically refers to the degree of explicitness of the sexual portrayals. Uh, movies, videos, books, magazines, uh, particularly nowadays, I mean, we have become much more tolerant of sexual related issues in our region or area. Uh, the vast majority of films and videos and even TV series uh, portray a lot of uh, sex acts and nudity that at one time, several years ago, would have ended up on the censor or editing room floor and not be shown. Uh, Classic example of a uh, suggestive or sexual material soft porn would be Playboy magazine. Shows frontal nudity, genitalia, uh, but it doesn't show any type of penetration. Uh, hard porn is a graphic description and video, film, uh, photographs of uh, penetration of bodily orifice and ejaculation. So that's hardcore porn. That's triple X porn and it shows uh, the actual penetration of bodily orifices. From a legal standpoint, communities dictate the standards of pornography and obscenity. Uh, obscene material includes material that's shocking and offensive to the senses. That is kind of a classic uh, definition of the difference between pornography. Uh, some of the areas that we consider socially unacceptable uh, are depictions or pictures of mutilation, torture, rape, uh, extreme forms of sadomasochism such as urination, defecation, uh, pain infliction, uh, bestiality, sex with animals, murder or snuff films. A lot of these involve some type of autoerotica sex where an individual is tied up and uh, strangled. Uh, they're actually filmed uh, uh, where they end up suffocating and dying. Uh, and in this country, child pornography is uh, also considered obscene, and that includes any minors under the 16 years of age in some type of pornographic film. Uh, that's a felony. Uh, in this country uh, across the board that's a federal standard so child por pornography is uh, subject to anyone that gauges in it is subject to uh, arrest and prose prosecution outside of murder rape uh, these other forms the sadomasochism uh, the uh, uh, other forms it's subject to uh, regional uh, censorship and regulation the, um, with the advent of the computer, the um, social media has, uh, has a number of uh, different um, avenues that one can explore. You know, one of the popular social media sites today is Facebook. Uh, but when it comes down to pornographic or, you know, material, uh, there's a number of social websites that are out on the uh, internet that someone, uh, if they're interested, can join. There are different uh, uh, c communication groups where you can add in on different blogs or tweets or what have you. Uh, obviously, internet sites, uh, you can either paid or they're free. Uh, there's a vast plethora of, of a number of these sites that are out there. I mean, the World Wide Web is absolutely saturated with porn sites. Uh, Usenet groups, uh, what these do is they will review, they'll look at, critique the different uh, internet and social media sites that are out there. Um, so there's almost every conceivable topic that's offered online. Uh, it just depends on what an individual's interests are. But also remember, when you're dealing in obscenity issues that we had just talked about, you're subject to prosecution and arrest. Now, on this slide, uh, there is online photo porn pornography. Uh, it's a cartoon. It's animated. Actually, I found it quite funny. Uh, so you can click on that. I don't think it'll be offensive. Um, 
this previous slide, the social media, uh, if you click on that, it'll give you links that uh, are related to different social media sites on the web. But going back to the online pornography, it's hard to regulate. Uh, with the advent of the computer, you have this global network. You don't have one computer that controls the net, so you have worldwide access. Uh, civil rights in cyberspace, uh, uh, it's, it, it's a difficult concept. Um, looking at some of your uh, obscenity-related uh, uh, content, child porn, uh, you are subject to, to federal law, but the community standards uh, are different for a lot of these different uh, uh, items. And depending on where you live, that region or area will dictate what's permissible and what isn't. Uh, you can't regulate everything that's out there via the worldwide net. Uh, there's material that originates in other countries that may it may be uh, permissible or um, limited regulation and uh, the rest of the world does not have to adhere to the United States laws when it deals with, uh, with pornography and obscenity. On this slide here you have a number of links. You got definition of pornography, definition of obscenity. Uh, you've got landmark cases in Roth versus the uh, United States, Miller versus California, Ginsburg versus the United States. These are all landmark cases regarding obscenity and pornography issues here in the United States. Probably one of the most important is Miller versus California. It's a landmark decision. Uh, Miller was a adult bookstore owner in L.A and this was back in uh, the early 70s. And in order to drum up some business, he decided to send out some mailers um, throughout uh, L.A. County, and particularly in and around the area where his bookstore was. It was just an arbitrary mailing. Uh, they weren't intended to go to anyone uh, specifically. Uh, it was just a blanket mailer. So consequently, some kids got a hold of the uh, brochure that was mailed out. Apparently it had some relatively explicit photos and uh, descriptions of what was being sold at the bookstore. Uh, the public uh, became enraged and uh, contacted local authorities who went out and arrested Miller for uh, obscenity and possession of uh, obscene materials. He went to court, he was convicted. Uh, he appealed and it went up to the Supreme Court who overturned the conviction saying that the state standard was much too broad and there had to been some type of uh, standard or definition uh, as to what constitute obscenity. And so what the Supreme Court did was develop a three-part test for juries to decide these obscenity cases. And what they decided was, number one, the average person must decide applying contemporary community standards would find the material appeals to the prurient interest. That means your lustful, sex-related uh, 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 emotions, if you will. So it's a fairly ambiguous uh, standard, because what is an average person? Well, we look at it collectively as a society, and we look at the people that live in a particular region or zone. So here in Southern California, we have much more permissible uh, access to uh, this literature and uh, this media. If you go to other parts of the country, the South, Southeast, uh, conservative areas in the Midwest, they may have more regulations as to what is permissible as to what can be sold and distributed. And number two, the material, the material depicts or describes in an offensive way sexual conduct prohibited by law. This goes hand in hand with that number one. And again, it's the regional area that dictates and regulates what's permissible. And number three, the material lacks serious artistic, scientific, or liter literary value. Uh, if they don't meet this three-part test, the material in question, it's not protected by the First Amendment right. And this has been the argument that uh, these people that have been arrested, Roth, Ginsburg, Miller, and others, uh, that uh, they should be allowed uh, to possess, distribute, sell this material because it's pretended under the First Amendment right of freedom of speech. The Supreme Court said they have to meet these three 
standards for it to be legal. It's pretty amb uh, ambiguous, uh, but what they did, the Supreme Court, they left the burden on the state and the regional area uh, to decide what they believed should be legal and illegal. Now, that was founded back in 1973. Um, at the time, the computer was just beginning to be developed. Uh, it wasn't as sophisticated as it, is, as it is today. It had more an effect for what you call your mail order or hard copy materials, such as magazines, newspapers, periodicals. Uh, and as a result, uh, a lot of critics like the ACLU and other uh, advocates for this type of material uh, say that you know they're they're pretty critical of it. The the law hasn't evolved, and uh, particularly when it comes to, you know, use of the computer for this type of material, uh, the court, the feds decided that this is a national standard. It's designed to be restrictive, but still, it left the um, uh, burden on the state and the regional areas to decide what was going to be permissible or not. Got to remember, cyber porn is not sent. It's available. It's out there. So the uh, onus is on the uh, person that's signing on to this material uh, that's engaged in it. So, you know, we can't prosecute the people that develop it because it may come from other countries and our laws don't apply to them. However, if you, let's say, have a computer and you're going to sign on to some child pornography, well, you are the recipient of this material and you're liable for its possession, use, and the content. So you're subject to arrest and prosecution. Obviously, pornography and uh, obscenity, it's a cash business that attracts organized crime. Um, there's a lot of money. There's billions and billions of dollars that are being generated over the uh, uh, production and uh, uh, sales of uh, pornography. Uh, a lot of this money goes into uh, money laundering enterprises, particularly if it's illegal, because it costs a lot to, to own it and uh, obtain it. And so, like anything else, drugs, prostitution, these illicit profits can go into a money laundering business. Uh, where they open up a legitimate type of business. Uh, for pornography, particularly your videos, your photographs, so on and so forth, uh, they are a conduit for human trafficking. It's also a conduit for prostitution. On this link down here, the FBI did fairly extensive studies on child pornography, not so much pornography or obscenity in general, but uh, their studies uh, are directed more towards child pornography, human trafficking. Now on this last slide, uh, I provided a triple X porn web link. Uh, if it offends you, you don't have any desire to view this type of material, then don't click on uh, this internet link down here. Uh, what I want you to do though, if you decide to view it, what it does, it'll, it'll link you to a uh, number of different websites of hardcore triple x porn that are available now, i want you to look at it from an academic standpoint uh, number one look at the number of websites that are out there then the first page you view is only one of about 10. Um, if you uh, click on one of the links uh, that will take you to the porn site uh, there's a number of different categories of porn that you can look at um, I want you to, if you do look at it, it is free. Um, now these are portions of uh, actual movies that were made, or they may be a, an entire movie that is several years old. But what I want you to do is look at the relationships between the actors. I want you to compare and contract the, uh, contrast the roles of, of the male and the female. You know, uh, who's dominant, who's submissive, um, are the actors, in your opinion, objectified as sex objects? Uh, and lastly, and most important, I want you to look at, do you think that uh, pornography is going to change sexual relationships? 
if it's viewed on a uh, constant or consistent manner. Uh, what are the consequences for viewing this stuff? When, particularly when you talk about uh, younger children or minors, if they manage to get a hold of this stuff, you know, and they view it, I mean, does that shape their uh, social and sexual thinking that this stuff is normal and this is what people are going to do? So how does pornography affect our social and sexual um, uh, relationships. So I want you to look at it from those three levels and then uh, I want you to blog your responses uh, for our student activity on the blog sheet. So good luck uh, if you care to look at it. Uh, just don't get into anything you need to spend money on. You shouldn't have to. These are free sites. Any problems or questions? Get a hold of me. Email me. Call me. Text me. Thank you.